video I'm gonna wrap I think the world's uh, first blackjack 42 so we've got a brand new blackjack 42 and I've got a printout over here this is the chaos theme uh, this boat is actually sold to a good client of mine and he picked uh, this theme and he had me adjust some colors on it this isn't how the chaos theme normally looks uh, this client has a bunch of RC cars and he's got this color theme going of these pinks and and sort of cyan colors and purples so he had me switch it over for him um, if you don't like this color scheme the, the, the standard chaos theme in fact I'll put it up in the corner here so you can see it uh, has white black uh, red and a light blue uh, it's supposed to look like a 3d theme so uh, this is gonna be a very important video because the blackjack 42 I think it's going to be a super popular boat for years to come. Uh, so this video uh, will be a great reference to get uh, your boat customized the way you like it. If you want to buy a graphic kit from me, um, we're going to go over the prep uh, very quickly. Um, but first, let's just talk about this boat. Uh, this boat appears to be vacuum formed. And what I mean by that is they take some plastic, heat it up, and then suck it down over top of a mold much like a Lexan body. And one of the things about uh, a lot of these vacuum form boats is you get this seam here, right? So this is one piece of the vacuum form and then the bottom is the other. And what I found is this seam right here uh, is a different thickness across the spectrum of Blackjack 42s. And the reason I think is because when they vacuum form it, somebody is coming through here and trimming this. Then they put them together and they're glued into one piece. With that said, this boat in particular, uh, this strip is going to be installed and then it's overcut intentionally so that you can trim it to fit just this little strip right here. I did this to try to tighten the gaps here for people and have an absolute professional look when it's done. Uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward install. It's just like the Blackjack 24. It's a lot like the Sonic Wake. Um, except this is just a big boy and, you know, getting this big piece on here is a little bit more difficult than, you know, a shorter boat like the Sonic Wake, I guess. Um, so without any further ado, let's get started. Uh, I've got the tools of the, you know, the trade here, isopropyl alcohol. I've gone through this a million times. If you watch some of my other videos, if you haven't, don't worry about it. Uh, there's an instruction sheet that'll come with it. It'll show all the tools you'll need. You can get them in line before you watch or get too deep into the video. Soapy water mix. I got my heat gun. Lint-free cloth. Felt tip squeegee. If you don't have a felt tip squeegee, you can just wrap a soft cloth around a squeegee. And I've got some 3M Tape Primer 94. I think I'm gonna use this right on this edge right here. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but if you wanna, you know, be a perfectionist, you can follow along with what I do and, uh, do it yourself. So the first thing we're going to install is this main centerpiece here. And I've, I've hung this uh, off the printer here because I have a, very little real estate to work with in here. So we're going to peel this off. And as I'm peeling it off, I'm going to spray it a little bit so that my uh, fingers don't stick to it as easily. Okay. But before we get to that, we need to do the standard prep. And the standard prep is uh, I'm spraying isopropyl alcohol down on this body. I take my clean cloth and I just go over the body. Now this body, uh, this boat haul is brand new. There's nothing on here that's, you know, no dirt, no uh, water grime, nothing like that. So I'm just going to do a quick once over here. Uh, I should probably state that I've already taken these side stickers off. The sides are stickers. Take them off. I warmed them up a little bit with a heat gun so that the residue came off with the sticker. Then I went back over it with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure I got all any leftover residue. This up here is not a sticker. And 
while I'm talking about it, actually there is, there's two here which will take off in the Horizon sticker, but while I'm talking about it, I can't believe how misplaced some of these, I'm assuming it's sublimation or screen print. I mean, this thing here is off by a quarter of an inch. That's, that's a lot. So, you know, we'll get this prepped and then I'll speed up the camera. I'll take off the stickers off of the cap, prep that, and then we'll get back to it. Okay, I got the boat uh, prepped up. It's ready to go. It's nice and sterile. I'm just gonna take some of this alcohol, put it on my hands, and clean them up because I'm about to pull the sticker off the sheet here. Now, mine is hanging from, you know, a, a machine. I would set up a separate table uh, that's nice and clean. Um, you can put some wax paper down if, it's, if you don't have a clean table or something sterile to keep the little pieces of dirt from around the table getting into the print. Okay. So I'm going to shake up my soapy water mix and I'm just going to liberally spray this down. Make sure you get it really well. Get the cap, even though we're not installing the cap, when we go to lay this thing down, uh, we don't want it to stick to the cap right away or by accident, I should say. I've got my heat gun ready here. We're gonna need that, okay? So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna pull this off just like this. And I'm just gonna give it a quick little hit of water there so that I can grab it without my hand sticking to it. Then I'm gonna pull this one down again hit it with the soapy water. If you're on a table, this is just laying flat, you'll have it laying back and you can hit it with the soapy water. I'm gonna keep pulling it down, spray it a little bit more as it's coming off. And that's it. I'm gonna come bring it back over here, getting a little bit of water on there. This is much harder to do by yourself. If you have a friend that can help you out, uh, have at it. And I'm just gonna get it laid down on top of the boat here. I gotta get the antenna through the hole, just like that. Once we get this thing on here, uh, it'll be a lot easier to deal with. So we'll bring this forward, just like this. Okay, looks good. Get that lifted and sort of recentered here. And then we're gonna walk. You can see I need some more up this way. So I'm just gonna lift it up and walk it that way. I got, I got everything pretty even around the hall cap here. Okay. And I realized halfway through here, I grabbed the isopropyl alcohol when I was spraying it on the machine. That's not a problem. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, mixtures on the market today, like Rapid Attack, have alcohol in them. It just helps uh, the evaporation process. So I went back and sprayed it with soapy water uh, before I put it on. And what I'm doing right now is just kind of pushing it down to sort of see where I'm at. Um, and just another little tip, if you are looking for absolute perfection, uh, my advice would be to have your, to either paint your boat black or have it painted black. Now this boat is black, but there's a couple spots where the original graphics are gonna show through. You know, 
80% of this boat is black, so I didn't have it painted. I'm just going to roll with it. But uh, as the instructions state, the best colors are white or black. Now, if you have a white boat and you don't want to paint it black, try and get a theme that's got a lot of white in it, okay? Uh, black is the go-to. That's the number one color um, for pretty much any graphic kit because what will end up happening is it just disappears because it looks like a shadow to the eye. Like when you when you shut your car door, there's a gap between the car the car doors, you know, the hood and the and the front quarter panel. Those black gaps just look like shadows, and we're used to them. And so that's what you're going to achieve uh, by painting your your hall black or starting with a black hall. So now I've got everything pretty well lined up. I'm checking my lines. I mean, they're perfect. I got lucky, uh, you know. This seam should fall as close to, like, just before you start to round over here on that round edge, okay? These graphics are so thick, yeah, you don't want them to sit right on the edge. You want to end up with a 16th inch gap around here. That's our, that's our end goal, okay? So I think what I'm going to do here, now that I've got it on, is I'm going to reset the camera, get it overhead so you can watch me work. All right, I'm going to grab my heat gun. I got everything pretty much where I want it. And I'm gonna start warming things up. I'm gonna reset this here. Got a little bit of a crinkle there and I think it's gonna be too much for me to, so I'm just gonna heat it up, soften it for myself a little bit here and then lay it back down. There we go. That'll come out, good. So it's kind of cool in my room. It's room temperature, 72. Uh, you know, that's a good temperature to install this stuff on because it keeps this fairly rigid while you're working with it. But when it comes time to lay it down, we need to soften it up. Now, you could say, well, Jared, what if I do it out in the sun, you know, on a nice day? It's 90 degrees outside. Well, you can, but the problem is that 90 degrees is going to make this material real soft when you go to lay it down. It might make it harder. I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to push the water down and out. I'm going to start in the middle push it down and out and then go to the side okay don't worry about the small picture right now worry about the big picture the big picture is getting it down on the big flat real estate of the boat okay you can see the water squirting out we're pushing all the air out and then i'm going to come up around here Come up around here. Again, we're working on the big picture. Don't worry about the little details right now. Gonna need, need some heat back here. I got some water build up right in here and it's kind of sucking back in a little bit. So now that we're done with the original placement, I'm gonna dry the cap off. I'm gonna be careful not to get my towel underneath the graphic, okay? Now we're gonna start working on this edge. Okay, so now we need to heat up the graphic a little bit here. And you'll see it sort of lay down from the heat because the heat's warming it up. Just like that. And then we're just going to push down, okay? Push down, push down, and go right up the side. Taking our time. Remember, this has been adhered down, so we start where it's adhered and push down. If we started here, there's still a little bit of water right there. You're going to end up with a bubble. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Push down. Push down. I'm going to need some heat back here. I can already tell. Hopefully I'm in frame here. Okay. And we're just going to push down. Just like that. Let's flip it around and do the other side. I'm just going to check my work here real quick. 
good. Got a couple bubbles here I need to get out. You could probably hear them when I ran my finger across it there. There it was. I need to make sure that this one is perfect because like I said, I have it sold. And if you're wondering, I do not do installs. Um, but I do, when I buy the boats to make the templates, I do sell them off. So, uh, if any of you are watching this and say, hey, I want to get one of them, or I want to get a boat sometime, send me an email and I'll put you on a list to check with you uh, when I get these products in here. I'll, I'll email a mass email and whoever is the first that says they want it, you can pick your own theme out and... I will sell you the boat or the monster truck or whatever it is I'm working on. Okay, and we're just gonna roll that down. And you can see I've got a little tiny relief cut right here because I know that that is where uh, a very critical spot is where we're gonna push all that memory back and it's gonna land right there. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, this kit has the metallic flake upgrade, which I'm sure is showing up on camera. So just gotta pop it and push that out. And then I got a little one right here. So I'm just gonna pop it and push that out. And then use the back of my knife, which is nice and flat, and then just press that down. Just like that. All right, we're looking good. I got everything down. That looks good. I got a spot here I need to work on. So that's looking pretty good. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this side reel on and then I'm gonna show you how to do uh, this strip right here. Okay, I'm gonna grab the strip. I got the camera focused in on this. I know it looks black, uh, really dark right there. I tried to lighten it up a little bit. If I turn it just a little bit, there we go. So I'm gonna grab the relevant piece that I need and that piece is on the left side of the sheet. First thing I'm gonna do is get this thing soaked down. Okay, then I'm gonna pluck the piece off the sheet. Here it is. I'm gonna lay it down and just give it the spray down here. Okay. All right, here we go. So this is gonna go like this. And what we're gonna do is get it within a 16th of this lip if we can, okay? Now again, as I described, this lip is a little bit different on every boat. So you may need to cheat it down just a little bit. The other thing I want you to watch is they glue it. So there's a little bit of glue residue that usually hangs down here. Try to avoid that. If, uh, if you see that glue residue before you get started and you think you can scrape it away a little bit, even better. Um, that glue residue can act as a pathway because the graphic can't sit down all the way uh, for dirt and other things to come in. You can see here, that's a little tight. So I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit there and then I can rock it back up into place back here because it looks like the seam starts to rock up in the back. Check my tolerances down here. I'm still pretty good. And I think what we need now is some heat because we're in the general vicinity here. So I'll go ahead and get that. Just gonna warm this up so I can sort of flex it just like that. There we go. And just check my camera quick, make sure I'm, oh yeah, we're good. Okay. 
And I want you to take notice how well everything registers. In other words, the C, you know, the J, everything is in line. You don't got to fight with it. I've already taken the time to make sure everything is designed and engineered so you can just install it and not have to worry about that kind of stuff. And of course I got a fly in here now. He wants to be on video apparently. Okay, back we go. From the top down, very simple approach, nothing fancy. I need a little bit of heat here because I can feel it cooling off. Got her warmed up a little bit. I can tell I need some heat back here. Just like that. Perfect, it's like butter. One of the things I want you to pay attention to is if you had to cheat it down a lot here and you end up getting this graphic down below this rolled edge, you're going to need to come back and back cut that because there's a lot of pressure that gets down in there uh, from the water as you're speeding through the water. And we don't want the graphic right on that edge. Can't have that. So uh, it's got to be just back from the edge and have a nice flat bond. And I'm just looking here. It looks like I just made it, but it could use maybe a 32nd or a 16th. And here's one of those spots I'm telling you about. Maybe you can see it. Let me see if the camera picks it up there. Uh, right there. Okay. That's where the glue is. Okay. And you can kind of see how that glue forced the graphic out just a little bit. But overall, this is good. I don't see any bubbles. Looks like we got maybe just a little bit of water left up top here. That happens sometimes because there's a little bit of a groove there. But in the end, it will come out right there. Some glue I can see. Again, I'll touch that stuff up at the end, okay? So now here's the proverbial lip I was talking about, okay? And what we're gonna have to do, this is this is the great equalizer piece. So we're gonna put this where it looks good. We're gonna leave ourselves a nice 16th inch gap right here. And then we're gonna trim the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is, because this is a very hard rolled edge here, and this piece is probably gonna sit on that rolled edge, I'm gonna use some of my Primer 94. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a really, really tight bond on that rolled edge and just give that some extra bite because as this graphic sits on this, on this rolled edge, it wants to straighten out like that. Okay, Primer 94, as I show in my other videos, I'll put it up in the top corner here quick. Be careful with the applicator that you use. Some foam brushes could disintegrate in this stuff. It's pretty strong. It's like an acetone based product. I know this one is safe. Test it first. Put your foam applicator in, brush it on an old piece of metal or plastic or something and see if you get like a streakiness from the disintegration of the foam. Just find what works for you. Um, I think a natural bristle brush could work, um, but this works for me. A little bit goes a long way, okay? So we're just gonna go like this. Just 
Okay, that's it. I'll do the other side. I'll probably speed up the film. I'm gonna go throw this out because it stinks. We're gonna let that dry. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this strip here. I'm gonna do uh, a wet apply to get it in place. So here's my soapy water, okay? And you notice I sprayed some of the decal too so it doesn't stick to that. And I'm gonna pull it off of here. And we're gonna get her lined up. Figure out where I'm at here, there we go. This is probably gonna be the toughest part that you do. We're gonna get through it together. And for right now, what I'm doing is I'm just getting a rough placement here so that I can take my hands off it like that, okay? Now I wanna just look and see where I'm at. Looks like it needs to go this way quite a bit. And I can see I'm, I'm overlapped back there. So I'm gonna just spray it down again. So without removing that, because it's holding for me, I'm just gonna cheat it until my artwork lines up. Now remember, at some point, this artwork is not gonna line up perfect because this thing curves and it's impossible for me to design it so that the entire stretch lines up. So what I do is I design it so that the, the middle lines up. And the reason for that is, is because as this sits on a computer screen, it turns like this. But when you go to install it, that turn is required to get it to go up and around over here. So long story short, just take my word for it. Um, that's how as designers, we have to work. We have to sort of pick a spot where we think the artwork needs to line up and then throw other artwork in other areas where we know it's not going to line up and try and fool the eye the best that we can. So I'm just going through here. That looks pretty darn good. And I'm trying to micromanage that maybe a little bit too much there, but let's get some heat involved here. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm only focusing on this upper gap, nothing else. I don't want it kissing it, I want it just off. If it is kissing it too close, in the end, I'm gonna come back and trim it. Okay. Gonna give it some heat here. Grab my trusty squeegee and slowly just work my way patiently, trying to keep that gap as even as possible here. I've got a 16th of an inch there and that's good. Gonna get down in there with this heat gun, try and get some of that moisture evaporated with it from this angle. You know, I wasn't so sure about these colors with this design, but boy, when I got it on here, I kind of like it. it over that edge a little bit okay make sure I'm still in frame for you guys here Let me back her up here we go I'm gonna use my thumb and just sort of go like this if you see any water squirting out, that means you're probably gonna end up needing some more heat in there. Slowly evaporate it out. You'll just keep trying until it stays down. A little 
little bit of a lip there. Let's get that down while I'm here and I don't forget about it. There we go. What's that? Got a perfect gap. Uh, here. I mean, you can barely see the artwork underneath, which is awesome. Um, so if you don't feel like painting, you could probably get away with a good install like this. All right, so I'm all the way up to here. I'm going to spray this down again. It sort of dried out on me. And we're just going to work our way. Get the camera moved here. going to work our way across here. Slide my thumb, get a nice even water push out. And again, we're going to rock up. We need heat. This piece is going to wrap just around here and get the camera moved. Okay, see how it just wraps around there? So we're still working. Taking my time. I'm gonna use my towel here because I can feel there's a lot of water trapped right here, like in these little seams. So as I'm pushing and it's squirting out, the towel will soak it up. Okay. There you go. Now, come back and look at our work. I'm gonna knock my water bottle over. Looks pretty good. Looks like I need some heat here. I got a little water trapped. I'll get the camera moved out for you guys. There we go. That's it. Okay. So now we have this issue of the overlap down here and we just need to trim that, okay? A lot of ways you could do it. Uh, I'm gonna run my finger across slowly and do it. Uh, you may have a better technique. It depends on how um, confident you are using your hands. I'm sure on camera right now, it looks good as it is, like it looks like there's a shadow there, but we really need to trim that back so that it's just up from that lip there because the way it's hanging down right now, that's a pathway for garbage and other things to get up in there and it'll just eventually make the graphic fail. The original stickers that came on this thing, they bridged this gap. Like the sticker started here and it went down and you could literally press on it and it was like a tunnel. I'm surprised they did that and then didn't come back and slice that, but you know, it is what it is. And uh, in the long run, that's either going to crack on people the way it was stock or it's just going to fail because there's going to be garbage that gets up inside there. So uh, let's get this cut. I'm going to speed up the film and we'll go on from there. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I took my fingers and used it, used my, uh, my middle finger as a guide along this edge and then kind of just went like that. And as I was doing it, I was thinking to myself, well, another way you could do it is to make it in two cuts, right? So we know that there's a gap here. You could find the, the gap with your knife, trim it along this, this ledge, right? So then your graphic will be flush with the bottom ledge. 
then you can see where you're at and come back and make your final cut a 16th up from that ledge. Depends on what you're comfortable with. I like the way it turned out. I don't have too much of a problem with it. There were a couple spots here uh, where I got a little high and I think what I'm gonna do is just heat this up and smudge it down just a touch. But overall, it's not bad. But I think I will try the other method uh, on the other side. So there's the front. It wraps around a little bit right there so that the water pushing on it doesn't pull it back. So it wraps around and just enough. Here's where we are. I think that looks pretty good. I am going to speed the film up and do the other side. It'll be the same process. Uh, you can watch me try that, that other method. I think I'm gonna try on the other side with this strip, cut along the edge, have the knife follow the cut edge and then come back and do a final 16th inch gap, okay? So let's get the camera set and off we go. Okay, here's where I am. I got uh, both sides done here. Uh, that side, this side, I got them trimmed up and I'm on to the cap. So I'm gonna pull the pieces I need off of my sheet. I'm gonna zoom the camera in so you can watch me do the cap and onward we go. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe down here. I'm gonna spray my towel with some isopropyl alcohol because I have been um, spraying soapy water on this. There's a lot of soapy residue left over and I just want to start with a clean slate. So the trick here is to do this bottom piece first. It's going to fit in there like a puzzle piece. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, tell us when we go to put this tougher piece on uh, where we are as far as where this piece landed. So we'll have the gap around the bottom, okay? So we're going to spray this down so nothing sticks. I'm going to go over to my sheet off camera. And I'm going to pluck it off. Spray it down just a little bit. And this will fit very nicely. You can leave your thumb screws in. You don't have to touch those. And this thing will fit perfectly. There we go. 
<clears throat> Just gotta give it a little tug here. There we go. Gotcha. Now I'm gonna grab my knife and lift this up a little bit here because I need to pull it back. It's gonna just kiss this bottom seam there. This. Perfect. Okay. Pull this back a little bit. Got a beautiful alignment of our artwork here. Okay, you can see it just flows. So I'm gonna do the usual uh, warm it up and squeegee down. I'm gonna speed up the film a little bit because this is just standard practice. <clears throat> All right, this piece is done. So the next piece we're gonna do is the cap. I'm gonna spray it down again. Now the cap is a little bit of a different uh, animal uh, because it's curved on a couple different axes there. So I'll walk you through that. Here it is. I'm just gonna lay it on top of the boat so I can spray it down. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold it uh, so you can see the white part here. See all the relief cuts? They are all in strategic areas so that as you form this thing around, I want you to see. See how there's a, a ridge right here? It's because I have to bring this around like this, okay? Now this, this relief cut is taking out the pressure. See how I can move that in like that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it all lined up so that it's nice and pretty up here at the top around this. <clears throat> then I'm gonna do uh, cuts at the bottom if need be, if it needs trimmed. This is gonna require some heat and some patience, okay? So just follow along and we'll get it done. I've got my seam lined up here pretty nicely. So I'm just gonna hold my heat gun back so I get more heat over a bigger area. And very slowly try and pinch this top down. What you don't want to do is start back here and work this ridge up to just that one relief cut. You want to try and split the difference so that this relief cut, see how that lifted up, gets some of the pressure and this relief cut gets some, some of the pressure. You got to split it up, okay? And when you're starting, don't press down too hard until you get it going, like I just did there. See how I just kind of did that a little bit, okay? Okay, and then I'm just gonna get this pivot point down back here. And then I'm just gonna work this like this so I've got the tough part down already. I mean, it literally happened right before our eyes there. Maybe a little bit too quickly. I apologize. Should have probably talked more about what I was doing. So I got the top down. Now I'm gonna push this down. Just like this. Okay. And we're all ready to this front here.
can you see what happened here? These two points, yeah, I see my camera is probably not, there we go. <clears throat> These two points came together, you see that? That's the point, because this had to curve around and with it being so thick, those things are absolutely essential. Since I'm zoomed in, you see that? I push it down and it comes up, I push it down and it comes up. Because when I push it down, the water's being forced out and it's sitting right on the edge. And then, when it, and then when the pressure wants to lift it up, the water gets sucked right back in. So you warm it up just a little bit. You take your towel and you press it down again and it doesn't come back up. You see that? That's it. I'm actually gonna hang on to my towel here and do the rest. turned out great <clears throat> so let's get uh, zoomed out and I'll get the boat spun around and we'll do the other side now zoom in a little bit here and it's just the same process in reverse for the most part. Warm it up. I'm gonna very lightly split the difference here. Just like that. Got a ridge there, okay? work our way right around right around to the front here looks like I'll need to do a little trim work at the front here <clears throat> which is normal because we do so much heat to get this thing to sit down and what happens is it stretches just a little bit looks like I have about an eighth of an inch of a stretch there and I'm just going over it here kind of looking and feeling for air pockets I see I've got one right there. I'm gonna try and see if I can still force that down and out. It doesn't look like I can. It's kind of landlocked, so I'm gonna have to pop that one. Okay, so there we go. Gave it a little pathway out, and you'd never know it was there. That's it. So I'm gonna come back over here quick, tie up some loose ends with the heat. You know, I just realized it's kind of cool just leaving this like that. I mean, you at this point, even though I include these pieces, you could decide to just leave that like that. I don't know. Nothing wrong with some pop rib riveted metal, I guess. Looks cool on almost any application, but you know, I do, I do supply it. If you want to use it, it's there. If you want to put it in storage and you change your mind a year down the road, you can, you can still do it. As you heat it up, the bubbles will really expose themselves if you have any. Um, as it cools back down, the bubbles will go away to the point where you probably, you won't even be able to see them. So as you're working on this, you're like, oh man, I got bubbles everywhere. Yeah, that's just some residual moisture that's in there that when you heat it up, it expands. When it cools down, it flattens out so much that you just, you can't see it. So don't freak out, you know, the really tiny stuff, don't, uh, don't get too crazy about. So here we are, that is looking pretty good. Okay, so spray it down, spray it down. Start back here. 
This piece will require some trimming. It's a little overcut because I don't know how much people are gonna stretch it or need to stretch it. So I'm just gonna leave my gap right there. Run it to the top. And watch what happens when I add this heat. See it fold right down? Folds right down on its own. Start in the middle. Just get the top down. That's what I like to do at least. Okay. And I'm gonna grab my towel, soak up some of this water as I'm pressing it down. Okay, and the other side's just same process. Not much to see. Here we go. Looks like I don't need to do any trimming. Maybe a 30 second on the, on the far side there, which I'll do at the end. Okay. Now, I've got one for here and one for here. Again, if you don't want to put them on, you don't have to. It's up to you. We'll wet it down. Wet this piece down. You know, this screen printed pop riveted thing that's on there is so crooked that I kind of like just covering it up because it's just that far off. I'm assuming what they do is they print a flat sheet of plastic, like they put the print on it and then they probably got a way of aligning it right onto the vacuum form mold. And when it vacuum forms down, it's close. Uh, but because plastic, when it's heated, stretches, uh, it probably just falls off kilter just a little, just enough to off center, you know, the pieces. No worries, we'll cover it up, make it our own, right? And then we'll do the other one. Just doing some cleanup here with the water. I'm gonna bring my heat back. That looks good. Okay, I have a couple pieces that cover up the backs here again. Optional. If you like the way those pop rivets look, leave it, you know, as is. I'm just going to dry apply these. They're small. Um, there you go. And then the other one. You know, an idea is uh, before you get started, you might even want to just paint like this area black to cover up those pop rivets because you know, there is a gap here, but I also have one for the front here. I'm 
just going to do a dry install. Looking good. Okay, and then we've got some windows to put on here. So I'm going to spin this girl around like this. And I'm going to zoom the camera in for everyone. There we go. Okay, so we'll add our soapy water. The windows are a little overcut as well. Uh, so that you can move them around and put them where you need and then you can trim them later if desired. See how they line up here. As you can see, it's, it's pretty good. I'm gonna show you a little trick here. Um, as these come around, it's gonna wanna form a ripple. You can see it right there. There's one up there. Don't force the ripple all into one spot, right? Just like I, I said up here, you wanna split it up. So I'm gonna take half the ripple this way and the other half kind of like this way. The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit here and I need to give it a little bit of heat so I can stretch it around this curve more. Just like that. There we go. Sometimes when you pull it around that curve like that, the ripples will pull out a little bit. Take my cloth. Awesome. Let's do this one. Okay. There's a little ridge right here, which is why I've got the gap there. There we go. That looks good. Just push it down like so. A little bit more heat. So I separated those ripples into three. One, two, three. I'm gonna bring this back one back even further and spread out that memory this way. That one's small enough; it can go just straight down, as is that one. Really, it's it's not that big of a deal. Uh, that's done. Okay. And I've got one more sticker left on the sheet before we do some final touches. And that sticker is right here. So let's get that installed. Pull it off my sheet. Okay. Spray it down. Now, you can make a judgment call here. If you wanna try and get that to roll up tight on there you can but I like to leave that gap exposed like so and the only problem is is that you can see that original blackjack design there those red bars you know in the end you can come in there with uh, a sharpie cover it up if you want uh, if you're real particular I would sharpie that over just that area right there or to my paint it black just a little spritz before you get started on your project Just give it some warmth and there we go okay so the project is done what I'm gonna do now is speed up the camera and just trim up a little, uh, a few of these pieces like around here, things that make me feel like it's more perfect.
Okay, I have this uh, Pro Boat uh, Blackjack 42 project completed. Uh, here it is. I gotta tell you, I like the way it turned out. You know, when I was changing the colors of this theme for this uh, client of mine, I thought, ah, you know, those colors really aren't me. And my wife and children came out and they just loved the colors. Then as I started to get it on there, I was like, all right, you know, this kind of works. But uh, this is the chaos theme. Again, I'll put a picture up in the top corner here of what the standard colors are. It's supposed to be like a 3D colors, the white, the, the, the red, and like the kind of light blue. And uh, this has the metallic flake. See if I can get it to sparkle for you a little bit here. Uh, this kit is installed, it's done. I think it looks fantastic. So I will put a link in the description to uh, more themes for the Blackjack 42. Uh, I also have the Blackjack 24 kits available. Same pro product, uh, you just get in there, you find a theme you like, and you can use the drop down menu once you're there to pick the boat application that you want it to fit, okay? So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.